Joe makes another reply. He starts off great. He recognizes there is no good in man and how great and marvelous God is. He again is saying biblical things we can read in the Psalms and the Prophets. He speaks of God stretching out the heavens and placing the constellations. It's beautiful and inspiring when he when he's looking at the greatness of God. Then Job looks again at himself and things turn very sour. He leaves biblical truth for complaint. He says that although he is in the right, he can't answer God. It sounds like he's saying God is not in the right. And if there's a right and wrong here, Job thinks that he is in the right. Job also claims of God he destroys both the blameless and the wicked. He's accusing God of lumping the blameless along with the wicked. Uh, the blameless can experience the same things as the wicked. The pruned branch and the branch cut off experience the same cutting. But one is out of wrath and is destined for the fire, while the other is out of love and goodness and is destined for further growth. God doesn't destroy the blameless. That's not the outcome, no matter how severe the cut seems at the moment. God will set Job straight some in the end, and Job will say he repents. However, God doesn't actually ever lay any blame on Job. He is kind and patient and understanding and gracious and compassionate and merciful. David was never in sin when he poured out his heart to God. There was to be a turning back to God, but God could handle the cries of despair that came first. He considers our frame. I'm loving all the scripture references in Job. It's all over. I haven't had the space to point it out, but here's a nod to why we need Jesus. Job says, There is no arbiter between us who might lay his hand on both of us. Then Jesus became our mediator.